Yeah. Uh huh. Welcome to the shooter's room. Made by the fans of the fans. Yeah. Uh huh. With your host, D. Swizzle and T. Welcome to another action packed episode of the Shooter's Roll podcast made by fans for the fans. I'm your co host, D. Swizzle. And tonight, joining me on the panel is my co host, T. Hey, go on. Great, brother. Uh, I'm really excited by our guest today. Uh, he's taken the time out to talk to us and seeing all the exciting things he's, get, he's getting down with, with with basketball. So excited about that. Fantastic, fantastic. And before we get and drum roll our special guest for tonight, we're also joined on tonight's panel by my boy, the Three Point Demon. How you going, RJ? Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for Good coming on. Us. Yeah, uh, man. Thanks. Drum roll for our guest for tonight. Uh, tonight we're joined by none other than Peter Mama. Uh, Peter's a basketballer, he's a coach, he's a skills trainer, he is a documentary star, rapper, and poet. How you going, Peter? <laughs> How you doing, guys? Thanks for inviting me for the podcast. I appreciate hey, it. Thanks for coming on and taking yeah. the time. Uh, first, I just want to start off with um, how, how you been and how have you uh, been keeping keeping on um, during um, these challenging times in COVID with COVID on? I've been all right, man. It was a very big shock to the system. I had to adjust pretty quick, but yeah, I've still been coaching like outdoor courts even now and then, like one on ones. But yeah, it's been pretty quiet <laughs> with the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I imagine it's a bit tough. Um, how how have you kept uh, your spirits up? What have you been uh, getting into? Have you tried anything new? Um, you know that you weren't trying before uh, the COVID pandemic hit. Uh, I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise as well because I got time. Because I was always so busy, I got time to kind of stop and actually plan my projects a bit better. So it was it's been good in in that sense. Like I've been doing more writing poetry, music. Um, working on my documentary coming out and stuff like that. Yeah, just it's been good to just kind of chill, I guess, in a in a way. You got a lot of projects coming. Uh, let's 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 wind it back though first to uh, a little bit about yourself. Um, tell us about your background and and your you know you playing ball and uh, what your influences are were and are and still are with with regards to basketball. Would like. I was, I was originally born in South Sudan in, like, 1990. And then, like, due to the war, we, we had to, like, run away from my country to, like, Ethiopia when I was, like, five years old. It's a long story, but long story short, we went from Sudan, a lot of adversity, to Ethiopia. And then from Ethiopia, I had to come to Kenya. I lived there for seven years. And then from Kenya, I came to Australia. And I didn't really play basketball until very late. Very, very late. I started playing at, like, 18, 17. But I started coaching before I played. So the reason why I started coaching is because my little brother and my cousins, yeah. I had to like support them and start to learn the game. So I started, I actually started as a coach. I learned the game, but I didn't know how to play just yet. But I knew the game a little bit. And I started learning by reading books and watching videos and all that stuff. Great. And, yeah. and then I just started coaching for fun as a hobby. And the next thing you know, I'm, I'm doing it as a business. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. So, uh, uh, founder of ATD Basketball, Attention to Detail Basketball. Um, yeah. When did you start and um, where are you currently at with that project? Well, I, unofficially, I started like maybe seven years ago. But officially, I've been doing it for like almost two years now. And I just started because, I don't know, like when, when I was starting playing basketball, I wish I had more. I, I try to become a coach that I wish I had. So try and be more understanding, break things down to – so everybody can, because some people don't understand what coaches say. So I try and break it down. That's why I call myself attention to detail. So I can break it down and slow it down so they can understand every aspect of the game, even the most complicated moves. I can make them understand it. And I just, yeah. And I've always been training people, but when I started as a business, my vision is to like help grow basketball in Australia, you know, create some more champion, uh, NBA players, NBA players, whatever, just to help with their journeys. Who are your influences for, for basketball, man? Like, who, who are the names that sort of um, drew your influence to actually play the game 
and, and coach as well. Actually, my 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 little brother, man, like he was very talented. Like just doesn't even train that much, but he's just super talented. And that's the reason why I, I I started playing. He's very um. He was so young, but he started. He was very like uh, raw. He could play, shoot. He scored like forty points a game, but he didn't really know much about the game. Man. When I I just started playing to kind of have someone to watch him because my parents didn't really watch us, so I would just go along his games and support him, buy him shoes, and then I just started playing. And then I started watching NBA, Kobe Bryant, you know, and I started watching old old games of Michael Jordan and Gary Payton and all the. Reggie Miller, because I was a shooter too, just like you, right? You were three point. Oh, right? oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that, I'm bro. Shooter, I like that. Bro. I want to give you a little challenge. Oh, hey, like hey, that. hey! I'm looking forward to it, bro. I'm telling hey, you right man. now, man. Can you beat me in a shooting contest? Man? Oh, but yeah, man. I just started, and I really fell in love with like the whole. I didn't like it at first because I was a soccer guy. I was losing my feet, and it was awkward holding the ball in my hand at first. But after a while, I just started. Um, started playing, man. And I used to love dunking, you know, like. Mm. Where Michael Jordan would dunk on people and stuff. But you've got an advantage yeah. though, because you, you you're good with your feet already. So that's a good yeah, platform yeah. to establish to play ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like once I understood the game, my feet actually helped me a lot. But yeah. But at the beginning, I was very raw, you know. But I was a good defender. I was always a good defender, good energy guy. Yeah. Like it took me a long. It took me a while to get to become a shooter and like a ball handler. But it was a quite a journey, putting a lot of work, man, by myself in Amada. I used to live in Amada, very cold. Small town. <laughs> yeah, man. Very cold. I, I did see an article uh, on one of your social pages uh, that you posted about your brother scoring. There was a news article about your brother pouring in yeah, like he, 65 points. Yeah, he's Ooh. crazy, man. <laughs> he's average like 40, 50 points a game. He's just, he's, he's insane. <laughs> you want to give yeah. your brother a shout out here? <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a shout out. What's that, Doc? <laughs> 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 nah, but he's just, yeah, he, he doesn't have the. Biggest work ethic, but he's just naturally talented. Yeah, uh, and then one of those guys, also huh? Maquetch as well. Maquetch came from there, and Maquetch right now he plays for New Mexico. I actually was with him yesterday. He's like very nice as well. He plays for Division One College. He's going back to America on Wednesday. And then the two, so all of us came from Amida. We're all going somewhere. Like I'm coaching Maquetch is in New Mexico. Matur is in um, Hawaii, and their younger brother Pop is. And Newington, they all went to Newington. They all got scholarships. And nice, nice. They're, they're, they're doing pretty good, yeah. It's kind of like my first clients. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Uh, growing up in Armadale, um, was was it a big basketball community? Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. It was, it was like a little community there. It was called Armadale Lions. They have like local comms and they have rap teams. It, was a, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, but it wasn't as competitive as Sydney, but. It was good. It was a good start. Yeah. And when did you move down to Sydney? I moved down like 2011 on and off. And then I kind of just moved here permanently. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, with your coaching, with, with ATD basketball, is there something yeah. in particular you focus in on or a particular age group um, that yeah. you are in the beginning? To? In the beginning, I was more like elite players, like more high level players. And then after a while, I just started coaching more kids. and. Um, but I, I I specialize in like shooting and like guard skills, and like sh- yeah. dribbling, shooting. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's good, man. But I can do big man stuff too because like, I played big at first because I, I I couldn't really sh- dribble, so I, I played four and five because I could rebound stuff. Mm. So I had to learn the drop sets of footwork. But I really specialize in shooting and ball handling as well. What's your height, Peter? Like six four. Nice. Yeah. How old are you? Are, are you? I just turned thirty actually the, the other day. <laughs> like. 24th of June. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Happy birthday, belated. Oh, yeah, belated, thanks, bro. Man. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. What about you guys? How long have you guys been playing ball for? Dex, you can start. Uh, well, so the backstory is me and the three-point demon, we played uh, in, high, in school. high school together. Uh, so we were yeah. the backcourt. And... Uh, RJ just just was just taking all the shots, and I was the one that was just, you know, at times silly enough to throw the ball to him all the time. So hey, Peter, uh, Peter, Peter, he, yeah. he like Penny Hardaway. So I told him play play like Penny. 
Give me uh, the ball. I, I love Penny Hardaway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, like, let, me, let me add to you, man. I, got, I made the school newspaper too, if, if oh, Dex already forgot. Okay. That's dope. Yeah, I didn't score as much as your brother. Nothing like that. Nothing crazy but like that. Made, hey, you still made it. You still made the thing. Exactly. Dexter would make the yeah. school newspaper on, on other good stuff, but I made it on sports. Okay. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but that was a long time ago for us, mate. That was... Yeah, uh, 2000, bro. 2000, bro. You guys so, look yeah. young, though. You guys look young. <laughs> Must be oh, Asian thanks, man. We're almost Asian 40, brother. bro. All of us, we're heading 40 now. Yeah. Black don't crack and Asians just don't get old. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just, we just stay young. <laughs> uh, some people don't believe that I'm that I'm 30, but to me, I look like I'm 30, like, because I know myself. But some people think I'm, I'm, I'm younger. Yeah. yeah. I guess it is what it is. Uh, yeah. your, your coaching, um, you know, you're, you're molding the next generation of Australian basketball players. Um, yes. How how do you see um, basketball today in Australia, and and what do you think um, uh, you know the sport can do as a whole to improve its its standing um, against you know the world's competition? I think they need to like really put money into it. There's not enough money in basketball. I think they got to put money in the grassroots level, like the kids who are like five, ten, twelve. That's where it starts. If you, if you can grow those kids, by the time they get older, they'll be elite. So, like, we have to start at the grassroots. There's not much attention to grassroots basketball. There's too much focus on the elites. But in the States, for example, they have a lot of money in basketball. And yeah, they man. start young, man. I like, totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So, it, it, it was straight up once to grow. We have to, like, make it more competitive by not. Because a lot of, there's a few politics here and there. Like, some kids can just stay out of shape and still play. But America, you can't play. I totally agree. agree. If I they agree. make it competitive and they just open it up, some kids have to work hard now. And now everybody's going to have some... All the courts in Sydney will be, like, packed. They won't be empty anymore. The people will be, they'll, they'll be trying to, like, train. So that's the biggest thing, I think. Just putting money in basketball and also focusing on the grassroots, you know? Kids from, like, seven onwards up to, like, 14. That's where they actually really develop. Yeah. yeah. So, like, Get them in early. Get them in early, yeah, and then the government, exactly. the, the government has to fund these things. Cause, yeah, you have to fund it. Yeah, you know, like that's why we come in. Yeah, like yeah. coach like me. I met coaches that that came over from like um, Spain and stuff, and they, they were surprised that um, most of the coaches out here are, are volunteers. I know. Yeah. Like you have to pay if, if you put the money there. Coaches will like they'll show up. They'll show up. Like what are that movie? Um, build it and they'll come they, they have to do something <laughs> and the coaches will show up yeah field of dreams yeah field of dreams <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not really, <laughs> that's well, the one man yeah look we we uh you you probably know we had ben knight on our podcast last week and he was talking about the same thing about uh, australia and in general um needing more basketball courts because there's not enough resources yeah like um, melbourne has way more than sydney yeah yeah Especially yeah. in Sydney, yeah. Um, you know, if if they build it, if you build it, they will come, as they say. Yeah, in the, in the I, I, I plan yeah. to have my own facility one day. Like, I want to have my own court and stuff, and actually specialize in stuff. But that's what yeah. we should be striving, man. Like, building more courts, building more. Like, we should actually have, like, school for coaches. Like, we can actually train coaches and how to train people, how to, like, because there's a lot of old school stuff that's not really working no more, like, and they're trying to stick to that, you know? Like, old school's mm -hmm. good, but not in the way that they're trying to do it. They're just stuck and they're not trying to evolve, you know? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. And and with the 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 young players you you coach, um yes. um what's one piece of advice you would give an aspiring baller um to to keep them focused on, on chasing their dreams? Just the biggest thing is just focus on like but I think a lot of kids don't know why they even play. You have to find out why you play, what you're trying to achieve, and mm -hmm. and then sit down and actually. Because I ask a lot of kids this, but they're shocked. Like they don't think about it. Why are you playing? What's your weaknesses? What's your strengths? Like they don't identify the games, and they don't try and develop. Like they just kind of play, play, play. But like they you guys just passion. sit down and actually get. But yeah, there's no passion there. But if you sit down like and actually organize your your whole career, like your your whole game. You can find your weaknesses and you can actually work towards them. And um, it, it, it gives you focus when you have a vision, just like you said. Like when you have a vision, you, you kind of, even if you might stray the path for a bit, 
but the vision just keeps you going. Like you might have some adversities, but you're always going to find your way back. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah Peter, like you, you're you're basically putting the, I guess, the onus is the onus is on the actual or the the kids, because yes. because it, yeah, yeah. We, we basically make them responsible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hold them accountable. Because a lot of kids don't even know. So I'm I'm also like studying to be a life coach, but they don't even know why they do what they do. Like, why are you playing basketball? Like, you mm-hmm. love it? If you love it, what, what would you do for what you love? And they're just That's like, right. whoa, they don't think about it. They just go through life on autopilot. You know, they don't even know what they're doing. That, and then that, they that, see somebody that's better than them and then they don't know how they got better because they weren't in their game. That sounds like the Jordan commercial, bro. What is love? <laughs> <laughs> what is love? <laughs> Yeah, but it's true, man. Like my, it's MJ true. Yeah, had, yeah. had a vision. MJ had a bro. MJ had a focus, man. Mm. And I think these days, I don't know like how I can say it, but just kids are soft, man. They're soft. <laughs> They're soft mentality. You said it, Peter, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Just be, it's, it's the truth, man. Like a lot it's of I, I tell them, like you have to go through some adversity too. You know, like you don't have to go through crazy things, but just you have to challenge yourself and. Make yourself grow by making yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah? Get yourself That's out of right. your comfort zone, and go through the adversity, and, and and you and you grow. But a lot of kids are too comfortable. They just, they just stay in that bubble. You know? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's why they're soft. Yeah. Like anybody can be tough if you just work on. So on can your I business. just say? Can I just say maybe you're the Australia version of Coach Carter? <laughs> nah, that guy is something <laughs> else, man. Something else, but yeah, something like that. I like his um some of his values. How he teaches the kids to be more than just basketball players, but yeah, yeah, I like I like his values. He's a bit high, so two two thousand push-ups. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> nobody's doing that. that I'll, I'll go to jail, man. <laughs> two thousand push-ups. What, what have you found uh, most rewarding about coaching? Just when you see a kid like start to see, start to be aware of themselves and like see, oh, they can actually be good. And just watching them grow, you know, like slowly, the little growth, and then they start to believe themselves and their confidence grows. I love that about basketball. Yeah. The, you want to give a plug of uh, what uh, ATD's a- next next uh, clinic's going to be or next project's going to be? Is there one coming up given that COVID? Uh, once the COVID stuff is finished, I, I can't, I don't know exact date, but I'm trying to run a camp. And, uh, I'm launching my like marketing documentary, like about my story a little bit and um, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, just doing that. But just because the corona kind of slowed everything down, but it's also oh, good yeah. in a way that it gives me time to kind of reflect. Yeah. And uh, once, yeah. Yeah, look, I, I'm just, you know, going through uh, a bit of your history and, uh, and a bit of your interest on your social pages. You're involved in quite a lot. You're doing a lot yeah. of. Um, uh, basketball and non-basketball related activities. Um, just wanted to pull up on something that I did see, which was you were involved in a mini documentary called Beneath Our Skin. Can you just tell us yeah, uh, a little bit about that? Uh, I was involved with a social um, a group called BISA, Black Town Youth and Services Center. So, like, um, I kind of mentor some of the kids there. So, like, they got, they got me involved in the documentary to kind of speak my piece and like maybe show some kids like you can be something like, even though I'm not like really there yet but like you can just not waste time not hang out too much and make something yourself and don't use don't really use obviously there's something wrong with the system a little bit but like don't use it as an excuse like don't help it you can just find ways to like um, and that's where we Get come in because Biza Biza tries to find more mentors like me to kind of like help the kids but a lot of kids don't have father figures or they don't have people that they can look up to you know and they only know what they know so if they see a different example maybe they can change their path a little bit yeah and and the did you get to meet up with a lot of the the people featured in that documentary or was it um, yeah 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 Yeah. and and how was that it was good man it was good to talk to them and um get to know them because we're just trying to promote visa because visa is like a it's one of the social groups, but they need like funding, so that's why we kind of did the documentary to kind of like get some more funding from the government. Yep. And kind of do because they actually do really good programs and they do music. Like some of the rappers that come from Blacktown, 
went through Bison, like, and we're, we're, I'm, I'm trying to be there for more of the sport aspect. We're trying to grow sport more. But right now, it's more about music and art. And they, they also help kids with, like, um, tools and skills to, like, find jobs. So they do a good job there. And that's a, that's an ongoing project for you, that, that mentoring yeah, yeah. advisor? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's an ongoing project, too. Yeah. Be there. Because of the corona, I haven't been there much. But when everything quiets down, I'll be back there again. It's just been a crazy year. <laughs> well, that's really great because um, – you, you probably don't know this. Me and RJ, we uh, we grew up in Blacktown. So, um, oh, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, Blacktown all our lives, bro. I yeah, saw yeah, I saw cool. a bit of the 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 documentary, as the, the trailer itself featuring Blacktown, and I just brought back memories. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was really cool, man. Like they even used my poem at the beginning. Like, yeah, dark skin. Yeah, it was really cool. It's great. Yeah. Now the the your next project, um, I, I I just want to put out. You're you're working on a current documentary. Um, how much yeah. of that can you share with uh, us? And this kind of started like as a marketing. I was just trying to do like marketing videos for my business and like launch a yeah. website, and then it just grew into something else. And it just kind of like yeah, like uh, it's being done by a few guys. Like there's one guy called Matt, Matt Harvey and Paul. So like they've been helping me out a lot with that, and they give they really give me like. Um, new new ideas you know <laughs> oh it's all about, about learning story. isn't it like yeah yeah it's all about learning. we don't know it all and uh yeah. we learn as we go along it's uh keeping never know it mind about things yeah that's what helped me as a coach just by always keeping an open mind because you never know everything and even even what you know you may not know it fully so you just question everything you, know, like, oh. you revisit things and you even if I know something that I know a thousand times and someone's talking to me about it, I'll just listen anyway because I might see a different perspective. Yeah. And just, that's how you learn. Yeah. And uh, the, the next thing I want to transition into, and uh, I really yeah. uh, I really caught this on, on your Insta page where you got tagged. You're a bit of a rapper. You can spit <laughs> yeah, some rhymes. Yeah. I've been rapping for a while. It's like a, it was a hobby, but I didn't want to show the world. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd do it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, your major influences, favorite rappers? Um, to name a few, like Nas. Nas Talk. is probably one of the first rappers that I that I that I heard. Like that's what album? I know I can. Oh, okay. Like I heard Illmatic, and I heard, but like the lyrics, I like to study the lyrics, and I look at like and it, you learn something from the raps. You know, I start learning about black culture, and like it makes you think. You know, thought provoking, mm. like Rakim. Biggie, Tupac, like um, Big Daddy Kane, so many like old school rappers, man. Like no- Naughty by Nature, like Lauren Hill, Erica Badu, like all these people that can just oh. they make you think, you know. What's your top, like, five? Go- oh, What's top five? Oh, that's top five. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> I don't know, man. But like the thing is, people don't understand. In my country, there's like rap also, but it's thousands of years old. Like people be like, they kind of freestyle. Let's say you want to get married. You have to make up a freestyle pretty much on the spot for your girl. You wow. know, like, and, and you have to memorize it. And it's, it's exactly like rap. It's the poetry, the the, the similes. So like, it's always been our, in our blood. That, but it's just different when you hear it in my language. But when I heard about rap, I just fell in love with it because it's it's very familiar to what I know already. Like I see my uncles get married and they sing about their wives and they make up a song. It's a freestyle and there's like a braggadocious effect as well. Like they brag about themselves a bit. So I'm used to it. I'm like, and then I'm, I see the correlation, but it's actually like similar to what we do. Hey, yeah. Peter. Hey, Peter. You yeah. just said your your uncle raps about their wives. I'm, I'm guessing it's not a diss track, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it is, she, he, he better watch out. I don't life, life. <laughs> you can't diss your wife and get away with it, man. Uh, I'm just that's joking. True. <laughs> I'm going to get married soon. I'm going to get married like maybe next year. Shit. I can't be dissing my wife, man. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough life. Man. <laughs> I don't know That's much about being married, but I'm pretty sure I have I have an idea. But you guys probably have an idea more than I do. Yeah, it's married. the same thing in every language, man. Every nationality. What, you guys, what can you guys give me as an advice for marriage, like the first few years? Man? Well, we'll ask T because he's he's he's, <laughs> he's the married one there. Yeah, give me, give me some advice. What should hey, I man. do? <laughs> I've been married for about a year, and uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happened before. Uh, when you get married, um, she pretty much 
owned you, man. Damn. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do everything now. Then. You're yeah, talking yeah, up exactly. a little bit more, mate. Talking up a uh, little bit more. Man, oh. like, um, you, you get the alpha's guy. The alpha's guy, when he gets married, that's his queen, right? That's your queen you're marrying. <laughs> yeah. So you, yeah. you have to treat her. You treat her like a queen. So You have to, yeah, man. RJ's got some good advice. I've heard some good advice from RJ. <laughs> you some advice, RJ. All right, all right, a couple of things. Partner, father, let, just just rein us all right. in, with, with some wisdom, like, mate. Just like, like a three-point shooting. Like a three-point shooting. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'm, like, I'm like the Craig Hodges for advice for this sort of thing. Um, no, I'm just joking. Right. Um, <laughs> listen, compromise. It's the biggest word in, in partnership. I should write that down. Compromise. Pa- that's compromise, a, that's bro. A good word. And the, yeah. the second biggest one is respecting the differences. You know, you, you're not going to be, you're not marrying you. You're going to be marrying, of course, slightly different, uh, you know, in personality and in, in, in perspective and in, in outlook. So respecting yeah. the differences and compromise are the top two, man. Because right, right. if you go along with that, you're good. Um, you, you're not going to be, you know, at each other's throats all the time. Um, and you're also going to give each other space because, you know, they meet you based on what you are at that time. So, you know, you Definitely, playing yeah. ball about like, three, four times a week or you go out with your friends, you still kind of need that. You know, you kind of need that because that's not what makes up you as a, as a whole. So, yes. you know what I mean? You will change and evolve, of course, as a married man with kids, but, you know, you can't lose that side of you because you need to be a whole going into your marriage. Yeah, you know I mean? it will make you mm. better, eh? Mm. That's right, man. That's right, bro. Yeah. So, Reverend, um, Reverend Ajo. Reverend Ajo. Right. I love it. I love it. We got the naps going, baby. The, the, the father episode is another episode. Uh, just, just stay in tune. Uh, hey, um, I'll be watching. I'll be watching your new podcast. podcast uh, coming with Ajo. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> uh, That's our head of that. our lifestyle channel right there, mate. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Mortel. I think the whole game is rigged, man. Like the way it grinds is built. Like God created us differently, bro. Like that's right. So, like, the, you have to communicate and find bridges because it's so hard. Well, when I was younger, it was so hard to understand women. Like, I didn't get it at all. Like, um, you might come with good intention and they're just taking the wrong way. Like, just stuff like that. It's very. Let me let me give you an yeah. advice too, bro. You will never yeah. understand them, and your job is yeah. never to understand them ever. That's true. That's true. Ever. So don't. That's true. It, it, it's worse than um, trigonometry in high school, bro. It's worse than that, man. Wow. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, it's like, I don't, I don't know what to go sometimes. I'm like, what? You just be sitting there like, because guys really be sitting there like, what? How did that happen? You don't even know how you got there. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. And then, and then they're looking at you like, you should know. Like, you should be, I can't read your mind. You got to no, no, no. be clear. Yeah. Just spit it out, yeah. bro. Spit it out. That's how it is. Communication is everything. That's the, that's the key. Communication is a big one. It's like, it's like coaching and it's like it's like being on the court. Communication is everything. You know, even the certain certain looks or certain like plays, you you gotta know it for you to to get to the end product. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, that's crazy. All right, back to Dex. I don't want to sort of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we start a long sermon. <laughs> we just do our own thing, man. You guys. Are <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll segue into. Uh, the NBA, uh, it's it's resuming soon after being yeah. uh, the season being suspended. Uh, I take it, Vader, you've missed you've missed the NBA and watching the NBA. Yeah, I watch I watch a lot on films film purposes. I like to break down film and like just learn the play. Like I learn a lot from people like Kyrie stuff like that. Like like I met Kyrie like eight years ago, like a long time ago, during the lockout yeah. in wow. Melbourne. Yeah, he's he's not even that tall, but man, he could. He got some moves, man. <laughs> mm. He got some moves. Yeah, like a really big camp in Melbourne. It was good to meet him there. Do you break down um, more current footage, or do you, do you like the old breaking down the old school? I'm, I'm more all over the place because old school is old, old. Old school never leaves. So is there, but people just don't realize it. Mm. Old school, like the fundamentals are the same. Just what it's like. It's like let's say you have a foundation. I used to do construction. You build a foundation for like a long time and no one even sees it. You don't even see the foundation anymore. Mm. And then you can you can build a house, any kind of house you want, but the foundation is sort of the same. But you can build any kind of house you want. So the games today are different with the flash, but the fundamentals are all the same. Like if you watch Kyrie Irving, people watch the flash, but if you break down his game, he's got very like precise footwork. Like, people don't yeah, understand footwork. 
That's right. Yeah, it's working amazing. For work and the way he and his timing, he knows when to go when to stop. But a lot of kids can't just do what he does, but they try. Or Steph, no one can just shoot like you can't just shoot like Steph without working on it. That's another topic to be discussed. Um Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but we can do that, right? Me and you, right? Yeah. You <laughs> yeah Ask about me. I'm a shooter, bro. I can shoot. Hey, all respect. I he- I've heard about you, dude. I'm not going to diss you or anything. I know, I know you're a shooter, dude, and you're a coach. You know your stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, we could, we could have a little, you know, you could teach me what you know. But I'm pretty sure some of you know that I don't know, and I can do something. I love me. Yeah, I've followed Ray Allen all my life when it comes to shooting, oh, so that's, yeah, that's my, that. that's, yeah, man. I was so I mad because he had a clinic. It was supposed to come, but it got canceled, bro. I was, I was ready to go there. Yeah. You, you see that? He was supposed to come to Australia. Yeah, I was ready. I, I booked my ticket out, bro. I was ready. I, I was going to I was gonna go there as a student, bro. Just start. Like, <laughs> Dex, T, did you hear about that? Yeah. 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 Oh, I was so mad. I was so cut. I was so mad, bro. This corona really, I think we're really living history right now, but we don't realize that until like five years later. This is really history to make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this corona yeah. This is history. The last number, it'll take at least two, three years before we get back to kind of semi normal. Yeah. This is no joke. Well, what, with the season coming back, what uh, what are you most looking forward to? Or who are you looking most Just forward? watching NBA, man. I don't, I don't watch any team right now. I don't care. Yeah. Man. Just any team. I just want to watch Even the NBA. Knicks, bro? Would you watch the Knicks? I don't, even the Knicks. I, at least I can watch you know, <laughs> that. Uh, what's his name? The junior guy, Duncan, the crazy hop. Like, he can hop. RJ Barrett. You know, like Dennis Smith. Dennis Smith. Dennis Smith yeah. I like. I like his game. I think he's got a lot of potential. He works on his game a little bit more. Yeah. And this is the serious is. question now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who do you think will win the NBA championship? Come on, man. Can I, can I pick Come more on, than one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Couple I have like different. I have like different theories. Okay. Okay. Give I me think... top three. Give us your top three and, and each three each theory. I think Clippers might surprise people because people don't understand. They got defense for days. <laughs> they got dogs, man. So I don't know. And, and Kawhi, I never bet on Kawhi again, man, against Kawhi. He just went, Spurs won a championship. Who who wins at the Raptors? He won a championship with the Raptors. And now he's going to think with Paul George? Come on, man. I reckon they're a big contender. And maybe Lakers second. And Giannis might surprise people. Giannis might actually mm. do something this year. Who knows? Especially with the short season and the rest they had. I reckon LeBron might even come back way better because he's just been chilling. And he might come back <laughs> like the back back in the day, LeBron. and just kill everybody. <laughs> but I don't know. Lakers, Clippers, and uh, the Bucks, man. That's my top three. That's your top three? Yeah. Hey. That's a pretty good, a pretty good one. That's pretty hey, good one. Who you got? Yeah. yeah. I just need to pick one team, man. It's going to be the Lakers if they get their oh, roster back, the right? Lake. Thank you. If they bro. get their roster. Thank you. If they get Thank their you. roster. So they lost every Bradley. Come on, man. They, every they, Bradley's they not coming him. back because uh, he, he has an issue with his son. Uh, yep. he, he's asthmatic. And yep. the other issue is um, uh, Dwight Howard. Um, he, he's basically yes, involved, I guess, with, with protests. So, depending. If, if he comes back and the roster is intact, then they, I think they're, they're the favourites. But LeBron is one with less, man. I don't. I never really bet against LeBron and some of them. Why? You never know, bro. LeBron's yeah. a freak. With the Lakers, uh, they've got Dion. Did they sign JR today? They're, I think they did, They're yeah. planning on They're planning it's on not it. Official. They're, they're, they're not official. It's, all, so, it's a step away. It's a step away. It's a step I said, yeah, my my get a time like call a time at the wrong time. <laughs> Run out with the ball again. <laughs> but I think they need to put a clause in his contract, bro, to put no Hennessy on his contract, man. Bro, who knows? He might get it. He, he might, might get high. I don't trust those people, man. He might do something stupid again in in the finals, bro. He can't he can't have that, bro. Did you look he like he was high, like huh? Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> But to his credit, he's won a championship with LeBron, so they have championship yeah. you know, DNA. Yeah, he's and he played. Cold, he played really good defense that year, so he got paid. Played really good defense. He's so. streaky though. He, when right. he's hot, give him the ball. But when he's like not hot, that's right. Yeah, you know. Well, you shooters can appreciate that. You Peter. Yeah, but I okay. think I'm yeah. more consistent. I can't and do what he does. Just that's the key word, Peter. That's exactly right, bro. Consistency is the key, bro. If I miss a three shots, I just drive it to the rim and get it. Like, I'm big. I just get a couple of layups or get the free throw line. Get my rhythm. I can't just keep shooting bricks. <laughs> but if I'm open, I'll just shoot it. I'm not going to, like, hesitate. But I'm not going to force it. He just forces it. He just 
That's the yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. But he makes them though. Shit, he makes some tough shots. RJ, who you got? Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Top <laughs> top three, and it's only the it's only three letters. L A L. Los Angeles Lakers. That's it. Wow. That's, all I that's it. Hey, that's it, bro. I, I I really want Lakers to win for Kobe, man. I really want Rick. Well, Kobe, that shit That's one happy. of the reasons why I want them to win, too. They have to but, win this year. They have to, bro, because Kobe. Mm. Yeah. For, I, for, I feel like the Kobe's going to be like, Sorry. I feel like Kobe's going to come as a ghost and just like mess up the game so that they, 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 they win. He'll <laughs> 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 you know, just be like, no, Lakers not losing today. <laughs> or he might like possess LeBron real quick and just do some fadeaways. If we see LeBron do a fadeaway, it, it could be Kobe, man. Who knows? <laughs> hey, Peter. Yeah. That sounds like a movie, man. That sounds like six men. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that movie. Wow, that movie hey, was old school. Yeah, we're basically gonna cover that in a couple of episodes. So <laughs> stay, stay tuned for the movie of basketball movies all time. Speaking of movies, Next who's like, man? Yeah, uh, look, I'll, I'll go to three. I'll go to three. Um, I want to hear this. Yeah, yeah, no, you you better hear this. All right, the Knicks didn't uh, make the playoffs. The Knicks didn't play the playoffs. So I know. Uh, make so, sure. Make sure. <laughs> my, my team's not there, and they're not even t- traveling to Orlando. Your team's uh, not there for the last 50 years, bro. So don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, uh, with Peter, I, I agree that the Bucks have got a shot yes, at they do. A, a run. I think they're, yeah. they're a good team led by a superstar, and they're well, very well coached. Um, they'll, yeah. they'll, I think they'll breeze through the East. No problem. Yeah, um, easy. Oh, no. I don't know. Actually, uh, man, Boston is low key, like up and down. You never know, man. Boston is like weird. Like in the playoffs, they just wake up. Like what? I, oh, and I think the time off, yeah. the time off for Boston's been good because it's it's gotten their stars uh, rested. I, I get that. I get that. But uh, uh, no one's stopping Giannis, in my view. Nah, in Giannis the is a freak, man. He built the war, but like you, you see what the, the, you see what the Raptors did to him last year. They just built the war. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Giannis is the kind of type that would adapt to that stuff. Like, he looks like he would adapt. Yeah, I agree. I think he's learned from last year. Yeah. And I think he's... Uh... He was crying, bro. Like, you know, it's not rare. You see people... Like, he's got that competitiveness, man. He really wants to win. Yeah. He's still lacking the moves, yeah. bro. He's, he's still lacking the moves, the one-on-one moves. Like, you, you're watching the All-Star game when, when he had one-on-one with LeBron. Like, he couldn't beat him. Couldn't get around him. Yeah. Or everyone was guy, the Bucks versus Giannis, the Lakers, man. Who can guy Giannis one-on-one? No one can guy Giannis one-on-one, bro. LeBron, bro. LeBron did. LeBron bro, did. Yeah, they played him in LA, bro. Come in the All-Stars. Man. In the All-Stars. In LA, in, in, and in LA. The last game before Le- the, the break. I don't think LeBron can sustain that level of defense for a long time. Come on, man. Giannis is just... Well, just when Giannis gets ahead of steam, LeBron didn't do nothing. Just He did a little Euro step and he's gone, man. <laughs> but he only has to do it for 10 minutes. He only has to do it for 10 minutes. That's it. 10 yeah, minutes. Man, hey, seven-game series, man. That's, not, that's more than 10 minutes, man. But yo, I never bet against LeBron, man. LeBron is just always smart man. To do things. Smart man right there. <laughs> smart man. Yeah. Especially even when he like went to the finals against his first. I'm like, this guy's gonna win someday. You guys just keep laughing at him. <laughs> he went to the Spurs and like but he lost it. He got swept, but like you can see that he wanted to go. Yeah, LeBron's a very unique player, man. Like he's yeah. all around. He's not really like Marco, not like Kobe, but he's his own player. He's got his own kind of game. My second pick, uh, and this is a team I chose right at the beginning of the regular season, and I'm right. sticking with them, yeah. Denver Nuggets. Yo, the Nuggets are not bad. Denver Nuggets. Jokic lost all this weight, apparently. Must have been the yeah, COVID. Have you seen him? He's, like He's got abs. He's got abs, apparently. Bro, they've also got, like, ball ball. You know, the ball was not bad. Yes, when it balls, son. Yeah. Has he been playing, bro? Is he active on the roster? He's I, think was, like, I think it was injured. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw Bobo, man, in like 1999, bro, in Kenya. Bro, <laughs> I thought I was seeing a giant, man. This guy is so yeah. tall. I was like, well, he's got good genes, bro. Bro, so tall. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not normal, man. Like, he'll make someone like Shaq look, look like a short guy. That's how tall he is. Seven for seven is no joke. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this was all about, did you know, um, because he had COVID. Because he had yeah, COVID, yeah. like yeah. We, we don't we don't know the the effects of it, like you know the long term effects. So if he if he comes back and plays good one game and then he's puffed by game two or three, then Who, yeah, this, is it Giannis? No, nah, this nah. is um, Jokic. Jokic, yeah. But he's more. No, I think mm. he's still like 
I think he still has his strength. I don't think he lost, even he lost weight. He, he looks like he's stronger, man. He looks like a, see his body, man? I was shocked. I'm like, what? Is that Jokic? I, I'm not used to him being that skinny, bro. I'm like, what? But he's not really but skinny. What? It's because he, he was big, so we think he's skinny, but he's actually strong. Yeah. Yeah. What's the vanity? Is it just vanity muscles? Like, or is it proper fitness? That's that, that's the other question. I have. That's that's what I'm most looking forward mm. to seeing. How how yeah, it could be how this has all changed him, whether yeah. or not he actually the, you know, his other skill set declines. You know, can he bang in the paint anymore because he's yeah. lost? Like, this is the questions, right? This is the intriguing parts of why COVID is, you know, has played on this season. Is otherwise we would have. We would have never known. And Jokic is always, by the time the pointy end of the season happens, he's he's puffed out. And uh, who's ta- who's who's taken the last shot most of the time? It's Jamal Murray, or it's Gary Jamal's Harris. Cold. Jamal's cold. You know? And you want you want your star player being the guy with the ball, with the clock running down, and it should be Jokic. Right. Jokic that. can pass the right pass. He can shoot the right yeah. shot. It's not. It's hard to guard, man. Even if we lose our weight, his skills are it's not going to go away. Yeah, he's too. He's too tall. He'll just pull up over anybody. What are they going to do? Yeah, I, I, I dig the Nuggets, and I've dug them from the beginning of the season. Um, I think though, uh, as my number one, and this is going to. This is you mentioned the team earlier, Peter. It, it's the Clippers. I like the Clippers to take it out. Yeah. I think there are, <laughs> there's a lot of dogs on that team, and. When when they got a when they got a bite they're gonna bite and you know the the flash of the the spotlight that is the L A Lakers um, I don't think has got it to I think it's gonna be any rivalry. It would be a great great uh, you know Western Conference series if it is. That would be so nice. I can't wait to watch that. I think that would be insane. Whoever wins in the West, I reckon has the biggest chance to win the whole yeah. thing. Well, I don't think the Bucks can beat the Clippers or the Lakers in a seven-game series. No, I don't Correct. think. I think like they need one more piece, like someone that to help Giannis. They need like someone. Hmm. I don't know who they need, but they need somebody else to help Chris Middleton. Like they need to like a big three. So Chris Middleton is good, but I feel like Chris Middleton is like a third tier. Third, player. He's not really like yeah, absolutely. He's not really like yeah, second right. tier. Like he can score fifty, but like doesn't. He's not second. He needs like Paul George, or he needs Kawhi. If Kawhi was in Bucks, they win. <laughs> You're not losing. Good call. Can you hey, with, that? with the Clippers, right? With the Clippers, um, I, th- I think this whole situation of not having, I guess, home court, because when if they came up in a seven-game series against LA, um, it's pretty much that home court, Staples Center, is, is the LA uh, home court. So then the, the Lakers pretty much have seven games at home, even went to that. So this COVID situation kind of neutralizes LA's home court advantage. That's so true. That's true. This, this actually makes the Clippers actually have a better chance. Or Wait, what when they got done, that, they'll play anyway. They'll play crowd, no crowd, doesn't matter. Well, they'll play oh, for free. <laughs> doesn't matter. Well, I, it's it's going to be certainly interesting. I mean, we've got uh, about a month to go uh, before tip off. Um, Is it even going to happen though? That's what I'm curious. That about. that yeah. that's a good question, right? If if enough yeah. players don't don't lock in. Then you know if, 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 what what do they do? They just cancel the whole thing. So even if you win this year, would you feel like you won something? Like this is like a very weird season. Like, <laughs> it's like that short season that LeBron won. Like did he really win? Like that short kind of lockout season. You know, it's an interesting point. I I think though these players, they they they're all fight. They want it. Like as they if it, yeah. you don't get to Mostly. that level for being. Blase about competition. You're there yeah. because you've yeah, out hustled yeah. everybody else on the way to the NBA. And Definitely. I, I, mm. look, I, I can't wait for the the competitors to come out. You know, the the Westbrooks, the Lillards. You know, just just firing up. Oh, I, I met Lillard. Lillard. Um, I met Lillard, man when he came for that rap thing. Yeah, and they they kind of called me up to play some people, and I was being people one on one, and I called him out. He's like, man, not now. I'm about to do my concert. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, I had a dream about him like three years ago, and my cousin said I was keep talking. And I was like, you can't guard me, Damien. You can't guard me, Damien. And the same thing he said in the dream, he said in real life, I was freaking. He's like, you can't guard me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I told him about it. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's the same, bro. That's going to be really interesting. And look, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. 
on yeah. tonight's episode. It's been you, a, a real treat um, learning about your background and your passion projects on and off the basketball court. I mean, because this is the game that we all love. We do these things for the love of the game. And we yeah. do appreciate your time joining yeah. us on the shooter's role. Peter, yeah. by the way, Dex, yeah. sorry. I just want to add a shout out to you, Peter, man. Uh, what you do for the community is just is is massive, dude. And Thanks, you know, man. not a lot of people can do what you can do, bro. And we're gonna shout out from on, on behalf of us three to just say, hey man, thank you for what you do. Because yeah, what you, you do man. for the community and for the kids is really something, dude. Not everyone can do what you can do, bro. So it's just a shout out to you, that, man. man. Thanks, I yep. appreciate that, man. Yeah. It takes a special yeah. person, man. Yeah. That's right. So, That's yeah. right. Sorry, Dex. No, it's all good. Look, you could you could follow Peter and um, his his projects. He's on Instagram. Handle is at ahoc one two three. His Facebook page, attention to detail basketball, is on there too. And yeah, even um, you, Instagram is ATD basketball as well. Yeah, and yeah. also. Uh, you know, Peter's got a SoundCloud page, but uh, he needs to update with some new current raps on there. So I'm looking forward to hearing some hey, more. I'm actually working on some stuff. One day I'm going yeah. to you guys. Sweet. Yep. Yeah. So if your viewers want to see more more rap, <laughs> please comment below. <laughs> more rap, more rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to start like a little sway in the morning. <laughs> I like that, bro. I like yeah, that. I you, like when that. you guys do that, let me know. I'll come on and do like a pop in the <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet mate that's sweet look uh she just roll appreciates you look yeah. uh you can follow our podcast as well as the youtube channel that we have we're on apple Podcasts and also on spotify uh, follow us on our instagram page and facebook if you haven't done so already we really appreciate your comments and also your your thoughts on the topics that we're going to discuss because it's your content and your feedback that really drives this program. So until next time, where the shooters roll podcast made by fans for the fans. Thank you very much, Peter, for joining us. Thank you guys for inviting me, man. Shout out to all you guys for hitting me up and giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. I'm always thankful for any opportunity that I get. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Keep shooting away. Always, man.